I'd call the Smart Pet a scooter, but Flycly is calling it a kick assist e bike, the perfect urban getaway, and the most wanted piece of transportation tech in any city. The concept here is simple. The Smart Pet will use its electric motor not to accelerate, but to maintain whatever speed you kick it into, up to 16 miles an hour. And I must confess that it does sound and look pretty cool. But is it cool? And is it worth 1,000 US dollars? No, it's not. Intel brings DDR4 to the mainstream with their new Core i7-6700K and Core i5-6600K processors. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. You're a fly fly smart pet. Get the You're plot. Really wearing this? Yeah. Is it funny or not? Karen, you are funny. It's too late to change. <laughs> so originally, Linus was going to review the smart pet. But when we got it, both tires were completely deflated, which wouldn't have been a problem, except that the front wheel has a Schrader valve, while the back wheel has a Presta valve. What? And because the smart hub that powers the rear wheel is in the way, there's so little space to insert a pump, and it's nearly impossible to inflate this tire. This was enough of an inconvenience that Linus never got around to fixing it and told me to figure it out and do the review. Sure. So I picked up a Presta valve converter, and after trying about a dozen pumps, I finally found one that was low profile enough to fit in here and inflate the tire. Right, so now let's charge it up, shall we? Except I don't see anywhere to insert the cable. Hmm, and this thing didn't come with a manual. Turns out that the charge port is in the axle hidden underneath this bolt. Huh, okay. So now we're ready to go, right? We'll connect it with the FlyCly app and nope, the app doesn't connect at all. People sure aren't happy about that, more on this later. Well, let's just try it without the app. Now the smart ped doesn't have a throttle, so you have to push off the ground to get it going. And it seems to take several pushes before it will engage the motor. Even pushing with all my might, I've never been able to get the smart ped to move very fast, despite being well under the weight limit. And that's just on level ground, but going downhill is also slow because of the regenerative brake. I wish I could just turn this feature off. Furthermore, even the slightest uphill will slow it down significantly, and if it gets any steeper, the motor will shut off completely. You can try helping it along by pushing with your leg, but it's exhausting. The best way to get up a hill with the smart ped is to get off and walk. And sometimes, especially if you're going fast, the smart ped refuses to lock in any speed at all. So you'll just slow down until you roll to a stop unless you kick off to get the motor going again. You see, because the smart ped doesn't have a throttle control, the smart hub wheel has to guess how fast you want to go, and it has to guess whether you've applied the brakes or not. That's probably why it just gives up when you encounter a hill. So much for all those fancy sensors and programming. So wherever you're going, you're going to be pretty sweaty by the time you get there. And I'm no lightweight. I ride a bike everywhere. I have never owned a car in my life. So when I say the smart pet is slow and exhausting, I mean it. To quantify this, I decided to benchmark the smart pet and compare it to all the other vehicles we have lying around the office. So that's my bicycle, my crappy Razor scooter, the Z-board electric skateboard Linus reviewed here, and of course the Lamborghini. The course I chose for testing begins at the office, goes down this long flat road, then up a hill, down a hill, around this roundabout, and back the same way to the office. That's a total of 2.2 kilometers. Wow, at 10 minutes for the round trip, the smart pet only beat the JD Razor scooter, which by the way has no motor and only cost me five bucks at a garage sale. To make this review, I've been using the smart pet as my daily driver instead of my bike for all of my errands around town. That's the whole point, right? Cruising through the city or commuting to work. But it's not clear to me if the smart pet is actually a vehicle or not. It's way too slow for the street, but it's too fast for the sidewalk, making it feel dangerous both ways. Whoa, 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 hey! What the f also, Flycly says you can take the smart pet on public transportation, but it doesn't fit in a bike holder on the front of a bus, and most of the bus drivers I talked to wouldn't even let me bring the smart pet onto the bus. Even when folded up, it's just too big. This one doesn't even have a joint right here. 
Now, it rains a lot in the Vancouver area, and the SmartPed appears to be resistant to rain, which is great. But this regular version doesn't have a back fender, and this means that the back of your pants will get absolutely soaked with water and mud, even on short trips, unless you MacGyver yourself a solution out of a milk jug like I did. Works pretty well, actually. By this point in the review, I realized that I was supposed to be using the Bitride app and not the Flycly app, which I learned after finally getting my hands on the pathetically short manual. I tried a couple of the different modes, settling on Turbo mode, which seems to help with hill climbing a little bit, but not much. I'd like to make some recommendations for the Flycly 2 or whatever, but I don't know if there's any point because Basically, the whole thing is bad. And the final conclusion about this product can pretty much be summed up with one final story from the two months I've been using it. I completed an entire trip with the Flycly without realizing that a small piece of wire had broken off inside the power connector, shorting it out. The SmartPed motor wasn't even working, and I couldn't tell the difference. That, combined with the rusting body and foldable stem that doesn't even lock in place sometimes, makes it impossible for me to recommend the SmartPed to anyone. And from the looks of the angry feedback from Kickstarter backers, both the ones that did receive products and those who didn't, I'm not the only one disappointed in the SmartPed. Well, thanks for watching guys. Give us a like or a dislike if that's how you feel, and let us know in the comments if there are any good electric vehicles that we should review. Get subscribed, check out our forums, and consider supporting us by changing your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code so we get a small kickback whenever you buy, I don't know, like a good electric vehicle or something. And if you're looking for something else to watch, click up here to check out our review of the Z-Board. See you next time.